regarded as one of the most frightening groups in the cluster, second in most people's eyes only to the never-ending scourge of Sancha Nation. The Blood Raider Covenant has gained a reputation as one of the most savage forces an individual can cross path with in New Eden. It is a particularly well-known sect of an ancient cult by the name of Sanisabik, which literally translates to blood seed. Under the leadership of the legendary Sabik priest Umir Sarikusa, they have made their way into the minds of the general populace as perennial boogeymans, people of tainted minds and ghastly appetites. The Sanisabi cult first appeared thousands of years ago on Amar Prime as a schematic sect of the Amarian faith long before the advent of space travel. This sect's guiding belief was that some people were born for greatness and other people lived only to breathe and serve these exalted few. To this they added the obsession with eternal life that permeates the upper tiers of the Amarian elite and the result was a cult so persuasive and destructive that Amarian religious authorities immediately stamped down on it. Depleted but not defeated, the sect lived on in the shadows, ever so often mutating itself anew. Today the cult exists in a multiple of independent sects throughout the Amar Empire, with some even having moved their business to other empires or out in neutral space. At some undocumented point in their history, the San Isabic began to using blood in the rituals and through each of the different sects of the cult varies in the ritual and doctrine. Blood is always the focal point on their search for immortality. A few sects have taken blooding, as they call the draining of blood from a body, to a new height. Rumors exist of blood farms, where people are kept against their will, their blood will be regularly harvested. Other stories tell of a sect that engage in necrophilic and even cannibalistic activities. As little is known of their inner workings of most of the sect, it is difficult to say whether these stories are true or just urban legends. Before Umir Sarikusa took leadership of the Covenant, the sect was already infamous for killing children, who were considered to have purer blood. Umir added to this practice by beginning to target those who were clones, believing their blood better suited for their arcane blood rituals. In their search for cloned people, Omir's sect has taken to space. In the time since, their frequent attacks on passenger ships and other space vessels have made them feared and hated across the entire cluster. While the fact that they originated within the Amar Empire is still a sore point for the Amar, and rarely brought up in a conversation, the Covenant do not return the Amar's hatred. Instead, they are inclined to view them as believers who has been led astray, faithful, who could realize their true potential if they could only accept the true, uncompromising and savage nature of their own faith. The fact is that San Isabic doctrine still shares a substantial number of belief with our Marian faith. It simply applies a different approach, paying particular attention to a number of scriptural passages that their Marian would just as soon gloss over. Under Sarikusa's rule, the Blood Raiders went from targeting children for their blood to targeting clone individuals. Because so many pod pilots are clones, the Blood Raiders have begun piracy in order to capture them. They are utterly ruthless in obtaining the precious red, regularly boarding other spacecrafts and abducting everyone on board. Some sects prefer to process their donors aboard the captured ships instead. They refer to the Sisters of Eve as Little Hunters and often follow their movements to be directed towards the nearest disaster. From their base in Delve, they launch lightning rapid parties and surprisingly well coordinated incursions deep into Empire space in pursuit of their goal. During Dukuta Karsot's corrupt rule of the Armar Empire, he was in contact with the raiders and employed them for various illicit projects. Karsat apparently approved for Raider philosophy to the point that he sent them various Amar emissaries, including Antar, following Yamul's return. Karsat fled to the Blood Raiders and hid among them, but he was later recaptured by the Amar Empire. 
The Blood Raiders were both terrified and enraged by the return of Jambul Sarum and vexed that their dealings with Chamberlain Kalsoth did not work. During the reign of Empress Yamil, they appeared politically uninterested in the affairs of the Amar Empire nor the Harris, at least to the casual eye. However, there was an upswing in Blood Riders' incursions along the Empire's borders in the bleak lands in devoid regions. Blood is a cornerstone of the Sonic Sabic religion, and to them, just as potent as the seal of the Imperial family is to the Amar. It serves several uses among the Sani Sabic, mainly in medical processes that improves quality of life in a myriad of ways. It is also seen as a symbol of good health, strength, and moral endurance against corrosive philosophies. Those who follow the Sabic faith wear necklaces with golden vials. Many adorn the walls with the same golden vials, decorated with silver droplets. It should be noted that as with many other religiously symbolic items, these icons symbolize not only an entity, but also an event. In the Sani Sabic's case, that entity is blood, which they worship and hold sacred, but they also have an occult application for the act of bloodletting itself. The golden vials around the worshipper's neck is thus a symbol that you will always be safe, because you have the symbolic catch of blood if it should ever be needed. It also reminds the wearer that the blood had to be taken from somebody else. This reinforces to the Sunny Sabics that they must always remain vigilant, active and aggressive in the pursuit of preservation of their faith. This does not mean that they see themselves as barbarous, but it's merely that, that their culture leaves a little space for flexibility, doubt or second thoughts. The Sunny Sabic universally believe in the Red God he is particularly unforgiving of any transgression. Part of the reasoning behind the Red God's name is obvious, but he is not only associated with blood. The redness can symbolize anything from a sunrise to the heart of an explosion. He symbolizes life, rejuvenation and strength in one hand, and the forces of destruction, anger and vengeance and death in the other. This multifaceted symbol is important to the Sanisabic as a culture because they are one of the new factions in New Eden distinguished primarily by religion and as such the religion has to have the capability to suffice every part of their daily life. If it didn't, they would long since have a lost cohesion, no doubt devolving and splintering into estranged, isolated cults. Their burial rituals include writing the names on the deceased in the Book of Dead. This register is a part of a burial ceremony that dates back over a thousand years. Though in modern times, the physical book has been replaced with an enormous digital archive which is stored at the headquarters of the Covenant. A condition of the entry of one's name into the Book of the Dead is seen as both a promise and a threat. The promise is that you will never be forgotten by the society to which you devoted your life. The threat, likewise, is that if one strays from the path, the crimes will affect both her own legacy and the lives of those she leave behind. While it's not a given that a particular crime will direct result in a devotee's death, if a crime is serious enough for the Sunny Sabic to consider striking someone out of the Book of Dead, it can safely be assumed that the death is waiting for that individual in a very near nature. Family members of those who refused entry or struck from the Book of Dead may only have the most basic funeral service. Other benefits as fundamental as education and medical aid are refused. However, on the basis that they are tainted by association as it usually leads to either self-imposed exiles or ignorable suicide, this type of shunning is applied only in extreme cases. The vast majority of Sani Sabic are not directly involved with the harvest of the blood, or bloodletting in general, or the hunting and sacrifice of cloned individuals. They are though aware that certain practices are carried out in the name of science and religion, but those things tend to happen far away to unnamed people, and the benefits, while vague and kept relatively secret, are reaped through the remarkable self-sufficiency of the Sani Sabic who very rarely need to trade with outside entities. The Blood Raiders in particular spend relatively little 
of their energies on raising crops and feeding their people, having found sustenance through the very fluid that gives them life. In fact, this anatomy is the resulting isolation that has perpetuated the common image of the Blood Raiders as monsters. Since the other faction only interacts with their bloodletting pirate crews and have no inkling of the cult's true society, they fear and demonize the Sunny Sabic at every turn. In their isolation from the Imperial Brethren, the Sunny Sabic have made amazing advances in the scientific research of blood plasma in various fields related to decomposition, rejuvenation, organ transplantation, and organ cultivation. Over the centuries they have developed an intimate knowledge of the workings of the human body, though unlike other factions, they have focused almost solely on biological aspects rather than delving into the arena of cybernetics. The Blood Raider Covenant, in particular, is a perfect example on how far they've come biologically. With the average citizen living well past over the age of 180, far from being naive or careless with their knowledge, the Covenant closely guards the secrecy of its medical advances. It is believed that aside from improving the nutrient and oxygen delivery of human blood, the Sanisabic has been able to vastly improve the human immune system, altering its characteristics to breed far more physiologically robust members of society through the manipulation of blood on a cellular level. Many believe that this is the primary reason for their interest in the blood of the children and clones, with the Sanisabic finding it far more potent in nature for experimentation. The Blood Raiders Covenant's elite combat units are known as the Crimson Paladins. Those who have faced off against these foes and survived have come back with stories that led many to believe the potential benefit of blood cell manipulation are wide and varied, with added strength endurance and immunity functions coming from the regular transfusion of cultivated and purified blood. This is also believed to be the contributing factor as to why the Blood Raider Covenant in particular among all the Sunny Sabics has had continued success. Its invasion teams are extremely difficult to deal with given their perfectly conditioned physiology and are probably surpassed only by the biomechanical army of the Sancho Nation. A hardly self-sufficient people with the very nature of their faith, the Sunny Sabic has also made leaps and bounds in optimizing lower-grade blood to provide simple sustenance, using various scientific means of regulation to mass-produce highly nutritious blood-based foodstuff for their growing flock. The Blood Ready Covenant is structured as a strictly hierarchy society. Religious tenets and rituals surrounding the use of blood are part of the daily life within the Covenant, having arguably more of an effect on the everyday lives of followers than the Church has on the Amar Empire. The arch and enigmatic Omir Sarikusa, known to many as Blood Omir, has led the Blood Raiders since YC84. In that time, he has transformed them from a rabble of disjointed worshippers into one of the most powerful pirate organizations in New Eden. He remains to this day one of Concord's 10 most wanted and sits at the top of similar lists within the Amar Empire and the Khanid region and the Amar Mandate. And behind him sits a trusted group of his closest allies, many of whom date back to his seizure of command a little over three decades ago. The vast majority of the organization revolves around the Bleeders, a force that serves a combination of law and religious enforcers. Commanding respect from the general population of the Covenant, Bleeders possess a higher degree of freedom than any other under the Sunny Sabic's faith. While not a secret police as such, the Bleeders deal with every aspect of life among the Sunny Sabic, acting as undertakers, religious advisors, midwives and priests, with an overshadowing presence of quiet dignity about them. They are held in the highest confidence by members of the communities, though this is usually tempered by a very real aura of danger. While one may confess his problems and worries to Bleeder, or even petty sins, one would not be so bold as to reveal the nature of any serious crimes against the fate or another follower for fear of swift and brutal retribution. Bleeders also take the name from one of their oldest responsibilities, ensuring that every follower donates blood on a regular basis in order to aid the rescue work. 
Those who do anger are bleeders by committing a crime or a great sin more often than not finds themselves in various parts of themselves used for live experimentation. As a society, the Blood Raider Covenant are fiercely proud of their independent way of life. Not unlike Sancha Nation, they are a society that was left to fend for themselves and have found a way to thrive that made them the subject of hatred among the entire cluster. The Covenant are well aware of this and take a certain degree in perverse pride in it, although they do not truly consider themselves evil any more than anyone else does. The Sanisabic feel that they present good fortune was hard won against odds stacked very much against them. Among their people, the practice of identifying and defying savants has been a part of Sanisabic's life for over a thousand years, but has in more recent times taken a backseat as the Blood Raiders in particular have winded their pursuits to acquisition, inspection and manipulating of blood with becoming their core focus. The only remaining echoes of the launding of savants are in the near worship of Umir Sarikusa and in the unstated but general belief among the Sunny Sabik that each and every one of them is a savant of New Eden, having all in one way or another been benefiting from the blood rituals. And here are some notable characters, as always. Umir Sarikusa Born in late YC 47, Sarikusa belongs to a linear that is a mixture of pure Amar and Didi's ancestry. While his official story is littered with misdirection and shrouded in secrecy and mythology, it is known that he was born somewhere in the Bleak Lands region, to a mother who was an high class escort and that early on in his childhood he displayed many psychopathic tendencies. When he was 17, he murdered the son of a wealthy holder, realizing they could no longer protect him. His relative gave him money and sent him off to the lawless territories of the Bleak Lands, where the Amarian authorities could not find him. The Blood Raiders found him instead. By the time he reached the age of 30, Sarikus had been inducted into the innermost ranks of the Blood Raiders and was considered a high priest. They gave him control of his own ship which he used to raid not only nearby imperial territories, but also other sects of the Sanisabic. His bloody and ruthless striking gathered him much loyalty and many followers among the cultists in the area. Under the direction of his superiors, Sarikusa eventually cowed these Sanisabic sects, forcing them to assimilate into the covenant. To this day, he is revered among his followers, with millions swearing fealty to him. Although his coup, with a subsequent purge drastically reduced the numbers within the Blood Raiders, it meant that everyone who remained was fiercely loyal to his leadership and his cause. Aremen Arka A woman of pure Armorian blood, born into the family of a wealthy holder in YC44, Aremen found himself in the Sanisabic faith at the young age of 22, swiftly defecting to the bleak lands to locate her kin. A leader of great intellect and tremendous cunning, she has for the past three decades remained a fiercely loyal and devoted follower of Sarakusa. She is charged with the day-to-day -day military operation of the entire covenant, ensuring that Sarakusa will is done. Raklira Merlon A certified sociopath and psychopath, Raklira was born on Velour 4 a little over four decades ago. After her mother died from complications during childbirth, her father disowned her during her early teenage years due to her increasingly antisocial behavior. Raklira spent much of her early life locked away in series of mental institutions within the Galente Federation. As for reaching the legal age for release, she ventured across the imperial border in search for the Blood Raider Covenant, vanishing for several years. During an attack on Federal Trade Convoy, in the system of Coverin, far outside the Blood Raiders' usual hunting grounds, she was elevated to the Federation's top 10 most wanted list, where she has remained ever since. Unpredictable, utterly psychotic, and fanatically loyal to the Blood Raiders, she has proven time and time again to be a highly capable pilot who will not hesitate to attack anyone she believes to be a threat to the Covenant. Raiseri Giant In Taki blood, but Sabic to his core. Raisera was born on the Intake homeworld in YC49 
and became embroiled in a life of crime during an early age. Part of a prison convoy traveled out of Kentucky and destined for Willy 4, Brazier was spared slaughter in YC-71 due to his bizarrely pale appearance and extreme height. After being introduced into the Sunny Sabic's faith, Brazier revealed a twisted and highly sadistic streak that earned him the name The Sick Giant. After several numbers of years as a bleeder, he ascended to a position leading internal security operative for the Blood Raiders Covenant. Eventually, after siding with Sarikusa during his coup in YC-84, Brazier became the Blood Raiders Covenant's head of internal security. The perfect position for a man with such a cruel, machine-like disposition. Tairei Namasuth Born on Oris, YC-77, as a member of minor royal family, Tare was cast out and exiled from her family at the age of 20 for the murder of her cousin during a minor family dispute. Reportedly, she was discovered soaked in crimson, drinking from her deceased relative's slashed throat. She lived in exile on the edge of the bleak lands for almost a decade, practicing the Sanisabic's faith in solitude, for coming personally involved with the Blood Raider Scouts and being indoctrinated into the Blood Raider Covenants a little over a year later. Today, Tere serves as one of the most senior tactical commanders in the Covenant, directly under the command of Umir Sarakusa Ahremen Arka. Described as a brutal, unforgiving commander who takes no prisoners, she is called on by the Covenant whenever an issue requires a hard, swift resolution. And I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, just tell me that in the comments, and I will keep this rolling on. And I'll see you guys again.